Shalom, Shalom. Giving all praise, honor, and infinite glory unto the Heavenly Father, Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem, Rachachudash. Double honors unto the head apostles and elders of Great Millstone, who do rule well and teach well, Shalom, unto the elders and the elder bishops of Great Millstone as well, Shalom, Shalom. Peace, love, salutations, and blessings unto the hopeful elect and the hearty Shalom to the sincere brethren laboring across the four winds of the earth, giving diligence to make their calling and election sure. Shalom, Shalom. So this lesson will be entitled, The True Worshippers Shall Worship the Father in Spirit and in Truth. Lord's will the lessons edifying and it reaches the ears of the whole for the elect. We'll start out with the book of St. John, the fourth chapter in the 23rd verse. And it reads, But the hour cometh and now is when the true worshipers shall worship the Father in spirit and in truth. And we're in the times where only the remnant, the hopeful elect, are going to worship the Father in spirit and in truth. Those who have the proper wisdom, knowledge, and understanding of the scriptures, starting with the teachers, you know, who have the mysteries, the breakdowns, the testimony of our Lord Yahweh Shai, on down to the believers who are built in fashion to believe on the report. It's like it, bear with me. <clears throat> Battling the toothache, so you got to bear with me. That may happen a few times during this lesson. But Lord, will you get edified? That's the main point. This is the book of St. John, the fourth chapter, and the 23rd verse again from the top. But the hour cometh and now is when the true worshipers shall worship the Father in spirit and in truth. For the Father seeketh such to worship him. The Most High is the Spirit, and they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. In spirit and in truth. And the Heavenly Father has to give you the spirit to receive the truth. And ultimately this, this truth, this truth is what's shaking up this planet. You know, it's the reason why these heathen are scared. You know, the scriptures say great fear fell upon them which saw them. Who? The dry bones who received the spirit of life which is being played out right before your very eyes. Vocab alone. The times of Israel, you know. Also, you have two-thirds of our people, they weren't built in the fashion to receive this truth as well. So you got Eve, you got, uh, you know, Eve out there saying that we ain't the Israelites, we're a hate group, you know. You got Charleston White and all sorts of reprobates fighting against this thing. And all of them are going to be confounded and destroyed. It's like it. This is uh, St. John 8 and 32. And ye shall know the truth. And ye shall know the truth. And the truth shall make you free. Free in the mind. You know. Free of the shackles of Babylon the Great and the witchcraft and sorcery. You know. That Esau Edom is perpetuating. Free of being confined to a box of being a proverb, uh, of being a byword and a proverb. You know, free in the mind, knowing who we are, knowing the Heavenly Father's name, His will, His report, the future of this place. That's what really makes you free. Having this gospel, man, having this wisdom, knowledge, understanding, having Yahweh, Yahweh, Yahweh Shai. That's what makes you free. And not all of our, not all of our people are, are built in a fashion, are built in fashion to receive this truth. Let's go to <clears throat> Saint John, the seventh chapter, and let's let's get something here. Let's let's go down to uh, thirty-seven. Bear with me. Bear with me. This is St. John 7 and 37. In the last day, the great day of the feast, Yahweh Shai stood and cried, saying, If any man thirsts, 
let him come unto me and drink the rivers of living water. He that believeth on me, as the scripture has said, out of his belly shall flow rivers of living water. This wisdom, knowledge, understanding, the spirit of life, you know, prophecy, you know, breakdowns, you know, the milk, the meat, the whole shebang. St. John 7 and 38 again from the top. He that believeth on me, as the scripture has said, as the scripture has said, that's how you got to believe, that's how you got to believe on the heavenly father through his son. As the scripture has said, he that believeth on me, as the scripture has said, out of his belly, his mind, shall flow rivers of living water. But he's, but this spake he of the spirit, which they that believe on him should receive. For the Holy Spirit was not yet given, because Yahu, because that Yahweh Shai was not yet glorified. You know, it wasn't the time yet. Many of the people, therefore, when they heard this saying, said of a truth, this is the prophet. Going back into Deuteronomy, the 18th chapter and the 15th verse. That's why it said right here with a capital P. Let's just get that quick precept. Let's get it up here. Deuteronomy 18. And it reads, <clears throat> Deuteronomy 18 and 15. And it reads, Yahweh ba Shem Yahweh Shai, thy power will raise up unto thee a prophet, capital P, from the midst of thee, of thy brethren, unto him, like unto, like unto me, unto him ye shall hearken. I'm going to read it again for the top. Deuteronomy 18 and 15. Yahweh ba Shem Yahweh Shai, thy power will raise up unto thee a prophet, capital P, from the midst of thee, of thy brethren. Because the Lord Yahweh Shai came through the loins of King David through Joseph. You know, it's evident our Lord sprang out of Judah. Hebrews 7 and 14. And it reads Deuteronomy 18 and 15. Yahweh Ba Shimei Shai, thy power will raise up unto thee a prophet from the midst of thee, of thy brethren, like unto me. Unto him ye shall hearken. So that that's what they were talking about. This is the prophet that's talked about in the law. You know? <clears throat> St. John 7 and 42 again from the top. Many of the people, therefore, when they heard this saying of a truth, this is the prophet. Others said, this is the anointed. But some said, shall Hamashiach come out of Galilee? Had not the scripture said, Talking about Micah 5 and 2. That Hamashiach cometh of the seed of David out of the town of Bethlehem where David was. Let's just get that real quick. Micah 5 and 2. Micah 5 and 2. Slack it. Bear with me. Micah 5 and 2 from the top. But thou Bethlehem afraid of. Though thou be little among the thousands of Judah, yet out of thee shall he come forth unto me that is to be ruler in Israel, whose goings have been from old, from everlasting. Talking about our Lord Yahweh Shai. And ultimately why these guys are, you know, raising up and rising up, you know, saying this and saying that is because ultimately they're offended at Yahweh Shai. They're offended at the men Yahweh Shai sent. And you're going to have men, more, more men, raise up saying that ain't this this ain't that because they were not built in in a fashion they were not constructed in a fashion to retain the truth because the scriptures say it's a fearful thing to fall into the hands of the living power not to get off topic but let's go to revelation 2 real quick because the heavenly father the reason why he's having these guys pop up is so they can be exposed you know, and those who are meant to repent, who are following them, and if, if, if the Spirit hops on those guys to repent, call all y'all about Shem Yahshai. But ultimately, these things have to happen. The scriptures say there's going to be men raising up with false doctrine, saying that I'm the anointed, you know, 
speaking damnable heresies, teaching damnable heresies. You're going to see men, you know, take the chip. You already got men out there telling you to take it. Esau Edom's going to come in like a flood. He's going to, you know, make his great accusation. All things must be fulfilled, including the false prophets, the false anointings, the false doctrines. That's all in the story. That's all in the story. So that's why you've been seeing what you've been seeing the past few days for anybody that's new. And those things must be addressed. But ultimately, the Heavenly Father is doing it to show his power because he can remove your candlestick at any given time. He's the one that gives you this wisdom, knowledge, understanding, and he can remove it at any given time. This is John 8 and 32, and it reads, And you shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. But the Heavenly Father has to put the Spirit on you to receive the truth, and he can remove that Spirit at any given time. This is John 4 and 24, the Most High is the Spirit, and they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. I actually had Hebrews 10 on deck. Hebrews 10 and 31, and it reads, It is a fearful thing to fall into the hands of the living power, because he can remove your candlestick at any given time. Bear with me. <clears throat> it's the only way I could do this lesson without, uh, without pain is to gargle the salt water. So bear with me. This is Revelation 2. <clears throat> Revelation 2. And I'll get right down to the point. Ne Revelation 2 and 4. Nevertheless, I am somewhat against thee because thou hast left thy first love. Remember, therefore, from whence thou art fallen and repent and do the first works. Be the sheep. Go to the highways and byways. Go to the gaps. Do lessons. You know? If you're a believer, hey, just believe. Read. Study. Pray. You know? Revelation 2 and 5. Remember, therefore, from whence thou art fallen, and repent, and do the first works, or else I will come unto thee quickly, and will remove thy candlestick out of its place, except thou repent. So the Heavenly Father, he can give you the candlestick and he can remove it just like that. It's a fearful thing, man. This is St. John 7 and 42. And it reads, so there was the vision among the people because of him. And that, that, that division is still here. Because you had some who believed on Yahweh Shai, and most didn't. Most were offended. And that had, that's being played out into this into these days, man. Until this day. You know? Let's go to Luke 2 real quick. This is Luke 2. Luke 2. I think it's about 34. This is Luke 2. Yep, and let's get 33 as well. This is Luke 2 and 33. And Joseph and his mother marveled at those things which were spoken of him, talking about Yahweh Shai. And Simeon blessed him and said unto Mary his mother, Behold, this child is set for the fall and rising of many in Israel, and for a sign which shall be spoken against to this day. Yea, a sword shall pierce through thy own soul also, that the thoughts and hearts that the thoughts and of many hearts may be revealed. I'm going to read again from the top. Luke 2 and 35. Yet a sword shall pierce through thy own soul also, that the, thought, that, the thoughts, that the thoughts of many hearts may be revealed. And that's being played out to this day. Because the Heavenly Father, he's only dealing with the elect, you know, and those are those true worshipers. This is John 7. This is John 4 and 23 again. But the hour cometh and now is when the true worshipers shall worship the Father in spirit and in truth. 
but the Heavenly Father has to put the Spirit on you to receive the 100% truth and to stay in the truth. For the Father seeketh such to worship Him, the Most High is His Spirit, and they that worship Him must worship Him in spirit and in truth. This is John 7. This is, I, I, actually, I was in Luke. It's so like a bear with me. Um, at Luke up here. Luke 2 and 35 again from the top. Luke 2 and 35. Yea, a sword shall pierce through thy own soul also, that the thoughts of many hearts may be revealed. And the Heavenly Father, you know, Yahweh Bashim Yahushai. He's working, man. He's working. And what's happening? Guys are being revealed. You know, ringleaders of the situation behind the scenes, pretending like they ain't doing nothing. You got more false doctrine being teached that isn't, you know, being exposed, you know, because you got you got guys who are following, you know, Yahweh the Maccabees and followers of Yahweh the Maccabees who are and, and, and some of those guys you know, who are um, who are not called out, who are teaching false doctrine, like the virgin birth and one, like like um, what are they teaching, man? They're teaching that we're in the new covenant. You know, the guys in the Nashville. I'll just say it. You know, I won't say your camp, but I'll say your city. The guys in the Nashville are teaching that we're in the new covenant, man. You know, and that King David demon <laughs> and other brothers and elders call it out through the spirit. It's just going to expose more false doctrine that, that, that's going to that, that's going to pop up out of that situation. You know, you're going to and what's happened? What happened today? <laughs> you know. More dirt came out, you know, it's all it's all happening through the spirit. You know, this is all happening through the spirit because. The rebels got to get purged out. But back to uh, back to the lesson, Salaka. Let's get Luke two, one more time, because that's what's happening. The Heavenly Father is revealing the thoughts of many hearts, you know, many minds. This is Luke two, and thirty four again. And Simeon blessed them, and said unto Mary, his mother, Behold, this child is set for the fall and rising of many in Israel. And for a sign which shall be spoken against, yea, a sword shall pierce through thy own soul also, that the thoughts of many hearts may be revealed. You know? And ultimately these guys are doing that because they're ultimately offended in Yahweh Shai. In the men Yahweh Shai sent. You know? This is uh, Psalms 150. Bear with me. This is Psalms 150 and 6. Let everything that hath breath praise the Lord, Yahweh Bashim Shai. Praise ye the Lord. Let everything that hath breath. Now, not everyone that calls on Yahweh, Yahweh Shai has the breath. You know, some guys just know they're Israelites. Some guys just know a few scriptures and that's as far and as high as their understanding goes. You know, having the breadth is having the true wisdom, knowledge, and understanding of the scriptures in its totality. Also, the ability to receive those teachings, the teachings of our Lord Yahweh Shai, and not be offended. This is Psalms 150 and 6. Let everything that hath breath praise the Lord Yahweh Bashim Shai. Praise ye Yahweh Bashim Shai. Let's go into this word breath. This is Psalms 150 and 6 again. Let everything that hath breath praise ye the Lord, praise ye Yahweh Bashim Yahshai. That word for hath breath is Nashama. And it goes into divine inspiration, intellect, inspiration, soul, spirit, breath, spirit, breath of the Most High. Bear with me, bear with me.
and it goes into breath spirit the spirit of the most high imparting life and wisdom which not every israelite has not every israelite is built in a fashion to receive the 100 percent truth the breath let's go to saint john 20 and while that's getting on deck actually it's lucky um <clears throat> this is saint john yep <clears throat> saint john 7 and 21 then say yahweh shai to them again peace be unto you as my father has sent me even so i even so send i you and when he had laid it's like it saint john 20 and 22 and when he had said this and when he had said this he breathed on them and re and said unto them receive ye the holy spirit receive ye the holy spirit so that's what the breath is symbolic of the holy spirit the wisdom knowledge and understanding that's the same breath that's talked about in Ezekiel the 37th chapter you know this is Psalms 150 and 6 again let everything that hath breath let everything that hath breath praise the Lord Yahweh Bahashim Yahweh Shai praise ye the Lord Yahweh Bahashim Yahweh Shai and that word for breath once again is Nashama Nashama yep Na Shama'a Nashama and it goes into breath, spirit. The spirit of the Most High imparting life and wisdom. And the scriptures say, the Most High loveth none but him that dwelleth with wisdom. You know, Wisdom of Solomon, the seventh chapter tells us that. And not everyone was, was meant to receive this wisdom. You know, you can see that by what's playing out, by what's playing out in the earth. IUYC still calling upon JC, guys out there saying that the MOTB is an embargo, you know, it's Christianity, it's white women. Bear with me. Let's go to Revelation 11 and 11 and it reads and after three days and a half the spirit of life from the most high entered into them and they stood upon their feet and great fear fell upon them which saw them talking about the remnant the hopeful elect you know who receive this wisdom knowledge and understanding you know the doctrine of life which leads to immortality Let's go to Hebrews 10. <clears throat> Hebrews 10. And let's start with uh, 22. Hebrews 10 and 22. And it reads, let us draw near with, with, let us draw near with a true heart and full assurance of faith having our hearts sprinkled from an evil conscience and our bodies washed with pure water. Talking about this wisdom, knowledge, and understanding. Ultimately, that happens through the word. You know, the word is the purifier, you know. Let us hold fast the profession of our faith without wavering, for he is faithful that promised our Lord Yahweh Shai, you know, the faithful witness. And let us consider one another to provoke unto love and to good works. Let's get this in the NLT. Hebrews 10 and 24 in the NLT. Hebrews 10 and 24 in the NLT. Let us think of ways to motivate one another to acts of love and good works. Talking about, you know, doing the work, exhorting one another, you know, lifting one another up.
rebuking and reproving, you know, when necessary, feeding the sheep, you know, because, you know, the, uh, the Holy Spirit, you know, what happens is, it's the ultimate motivator. You know, you see the spirit on a man and you'll watch a lesson and you'll see brothers, elders, you know, uh, bishops, they'll be in the spirit heavy and that's contagious. It gets on other men and all of a sudden now you're going, you know, you'll see a, a fire live stream. That's hap it's happened to me a couple of times and other brothers as well in the camp. They can attest to this. You'll watch a fire live stream and all of a sudden now you're doing a live stream or you'll see brothers at camp midweek and you'll check your schedule and they, all of a sudden now you're at camp a few hours later you know or you're at camp the next day and you make an opening in your schedule to get out there as well you know that's provoking each other onto good works <sighs> Hebrews 10 and 25 not forsaking the assembly of ourselves together the gathering as the manner of some is but exhorting one exhorting one another so much the more as ye see the day approaching what so like bear with me the day of our Lord Yahweh Shai the perfect day this is Hebrews 10 and 25 in the NLT and it reads and let us not neglect our meeting together the gathering as some people do but encourage one another especially now that the day of his return is drawing near. We see it. We feel it. You know, we can feel it in the air. Also, we can feel the persecution coming in the air, the hatred, you know. The accusation, the slander, you know. We can sense false doctrine, you know, Fal uh, false apostles, false anointed, fal brethren crept in unawares. We see it all through the spirit because the heavenly father has imparted the spirit of discernment on us. You know, I don't write this out. He keeps us like that, man, to the end. This is Hebrews 10 and 26 in the KJV. For if we sin willfully, after that, we have, for if we sin willfully, after that we have received the knowledge of the truth, there remaineth no more sacrifice for sins. And this is talking about, you know, turning our back on Yahweh Shai. Because you're still going to have shortcomings in the truth and you're, gonna, you're still going to be sinning, you know. These chains of darkness, you know, they'll, they'll make you think evil thoughts. You may slip up here and there, you know. We're not perfect. And we're not meant to be perfect until we receive those new bodies. But willfully sinning, that's talking about turning your, Lord, turning your back on the Lord. Because the Lord, he's the only one that has, that has power to forgive sins, you know. And when you turn your back in the Lord, you don't have any covering anymore for your sins. You know? Revelation 16 and 15. Real quick. Behold. Revelation 16 and 15, Behold, I come as a thief. Blessed he that watcheth that keepeth his garments, lest he walk naked and they see his shame. Let's get another one. Yep. This is Matthew 9 and 6. <clears throat> This is Matthew 9 and 6. 
Let's read the NIV. Let's just see what it says. But I want you to know that the Son of Man has authority on earth to forgive sins. So he said to the paralyzed man, get up, take your mat, and go home. The NLT. So I prove to you that the Son of Man has the authority on earth to forgive sins. Yahweh Shai turned to the paralyzed man and said, Stand up, pick up your mat, and go home. So the Heavenly Father has imparted the, the Son the power to forgive sins. And that goes all the way back to the law. Exodus, the 23rd chapter. Behold, I send an angel before thee to keep thee in the way. You know, beware of his voice. For he will not pardon your transgressions. Let's talk about our Lord Yahweh Shai. That's why in that verse, that's why in that verse, Salakia has a capital A. This is Hebrews 10. Let's keep on reading. Hebrews 10 and 27. But a certain fearful looking for, but a certain fearful looking for judgment and fiery indignation, which shall devour the adversaries. Those who turn their back on the Lord Yahweh Shai, you know. He that despised Moses, he that despises Moses' law, die without mercy under two or three witnesses. And you have those same men coming back, you know, murmuring all over again. Of how much sore punishment suppose ye shall be brought, shall he be thought worthy who had trodden underfoot the Son of the Most High, or had counted the blood of the covenant wherewith the blood of the covenant wherewith he was sanctified and the holy thing it's like it and had or how much more sore punishment suppose ye shall he be trodden worthy who had trodden under underfoot the son of man and had counted the blood of the covenant wherewith he was sanctified an unholy thing and had done despite unto the spirit of grace. Let's get this in the NLT. Bear with me. I'll make a part two. It's like it. Because I got to get more water. Bear with me. <laughs> 